Hi, and welcome to another video. This video is going to be the start of a series on locator strategies. Locator strategies are very important when doing test automation. It is one of the most important steps prior to automating test scenarios that allows you to build efficient scripts. Using the right locator ensures that the tests are faster, more reliable, and has lower maintenance over releases. For the duration of this series, I will walk you through the different locator strategies that can be used, as well as how to implement those in your tests. Let's get started. On a web page or in an application, there is a diverse range of web elements. You can have a text box, a button, drop down, hyperlinks, check boxes, or radio buttons, among other things. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It is the standard markup language for creating web pages and describes the structure of a web page. It consists of a series of elements that tells the browser how to display the content. You may have things such as a heading, a paragraph, or a link. HTML elements are normally defined by a start tag. It has some content and then an end tag. So if you want to have a heading, you can use H1. You put the content, which in this case is HTML element tutorial, and then you close your H1 tag. Or if you want to have a button, you have the start tag for the button. Enter some text that you want to be displayed on the button, and then close that button element. An element locator is different from an element. An element is rendered on a web page. An element locator, also referred to as a selector or identifier, is an address that uniquely identifies that web element on a web page. Locators find and return specific elements and can be found using different strategies. Locators are used by or test automation to identify and operate on web elements. It allows our automation to do actions such as click, get text from an element, enter text into an input field, among other things. Elements are located using several different strategies, ID, name, class names, CSS, expat, etc. We will get into those individually later on in this series. In test automation, proper locator strategy is very important. The application can change and will change. Test automation will need to be maintained to test for those changes. If you do not use proper locator strategy, it will result in a lot of flaky tests and tests that break as soon as an application change or the elements on the web page change. Using the element selector that is most unlikely to change allows your automation to be as robust as possible. This is not set in stone, but generally you want to adopt this priority order when finding unique elements. A unique ID, then a unique class, and then you can use unique attributes. Developers play an important role in creating new web elements, and so it is very important that they follow this hierarchy, first ensuring that elements have unique IDs where possible, so that the application is more friendly 
for test automation and results in less flaky tests. With all that in mind, let us go to google.com and if we right click and inspect on the Chrome browser, we will see that it has a variety of web elements. These are different web elements that we can use in our test automation. We have IDs, classes, headers. In this web series, we will be going through the different locator strategies that can be used as well as demonstrating how to implement those effectively in your test automation. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. See you in the next one.